Hey guys, Working Man Reads. Back from my little mini vacation, it was my best friend, my childhood friend's wedding, and I was the best man, so your boy had to write a speech, had to do it in front of everybody, and we had fun. And I'm probably going to get a million notifications on my computer, but um, I want to thank everybody for uh, the nice, uplifting, and con um, kind comments from my, on my last video. Thank you guys so much. This is exactly why I'm here. You know, you guys showed me uh, what friends are. And speaking of friends, when I got home, I saw a quite large package. Let's see. So big box, real big box. And uh, yeah, my boy Nick over at Spooky Noodles, which I will be linking his channel down below, sent me quite a large book, uh, box of books. And I have no idea what I got because all I did was slice open the top because he had it duct taped. And uh, yeah, we're going to go through these. The only one I know I'm getting is this one right on the top. And that's Three Roads South by Jake Foster. He has a uh, review for for this novel on his channel, Nick, it, Nick does. So I'll just link that video down below so you can kind of hear about this one but it's a western him and i have been on a little western kick for a while now and uh yeah i'm excited i just love that old school feel this looks like something my uh my great grandmother would read so she used to love all those westerns and growing up i inherited her vhs tapes of all the westerns like uh clint eastwood and john wayne and stuff so grandma and grandpa if you're watching I will call you back. Yeah, that would that would be, uh, I believe, Grandma's. Where was it? Grandpa's uh, mom. But, yeah, long story short, I would watch all those growing up. So, oh, this one's sick. Look how good shape this is in. Call Me Shane, it says on the back. Shane by Jake Schaefer. He rode into our valley in the summer of 89. A slim man dressed in black. Call me Shane, he said. He never told us more. There was a deadly calm in the valley. That seemed to focus on Shane. Wow, that sounds awesome. I'm going to stop there because I hate synopsis. The unforgettable novel about a boy's love and a gunman's struggle to escape his past. So that's Shane by Jake Schaefer. Or Jack Sheffer. Oh, we got some horror right off the top. So I take it he wants me to read this one next. I do not own this one. The Traveling Vampire Show by Richard Lehman. So that's awesome. It's hot. It's a hot August morning in 1963, all over the rural town of Granville, Granville, tack, tacked to power poles and trees, taped to store windows, flyers have appeared, announcing the one night only performance of the traveling vampire show. The promised highlight of the show is the gorgeous Valeria, the only living vampire in captivity. I'm going to stop there, but it's awesome. Everybody pretty much knows about the Traveling Vampire Show. Um, it's one of the best um, by Layman, I would say. And uh, if you've missed Layman, you've missed a treat, says Stephen King. So there you go. There's that. Oh, we got some more horror here. This is going to be a long video, so I hope you guys are ready. This is sick. This looks like old school. It's a leisure horror, so it's got to be... It's got to be kind of old. It's probably the oldest... I never get any cool horror. I have like nothing that's throwback. This is from 1986 by Steve Vance. We got the Hyde Effect. I'm excited. Beware the man beast when the full moon is full. When the moon is full. Oh my gosh. So it's like probably a, um, it's probably a lichen, AKA werewolf novel. It says uh, the mangler in the hills of Southern California, a series a violent and gruesome deaths occur within the space of a few hours. The murders are, attribu are attributed to some unknown savage animal. Precisely one month later, college student Meg Talley is attacked in the same manner. Astonishingly, she survives, but when she insists that her assailant was a hideous monster-like creature, she is called hysterical. Journalist Douglas Morgan, Private Eye Nick Ruel, and a horror novelist Blake Corbett. I love when there's authors that are in storylines. Just saying. However, have have each theorized that the mangling in a credible, th though it seems, might be the work of a werewolf. So I'm going to stop there. 
and they like team up, I'm assuming to try to prove it true. So that's the hide effect. Maybe that'll be my uh, creature feature novel where I have to read, I believe, like a book like a werewolf for the uh, October extravaganza hosted by John over at Books of Blood. Maybe that'll be the, the plan. I'm gonna pull this big one out here. Oh snap. Wizard in Glass. This is one of the big floppy pa Oh, it's got illustrations. Okay, this won't give you way. I don't know, I can't show that one on TV or on uh, YouTube. Can't show that one either. I love it. Okay, I can show you this one. So it's got the illustrations in it. It's a wizard in glass. Maybe this will get me to finally finish this book because I have put it down quite a few times and it is about time that I do. Oh, I'm assuming that must be Jake. Just look at how creepy these are. That's pretty sweet. So, thank you, Nick. Dude, I'm excited right now. This is like Christmas morning. Am I still recording? This is a long one. Oh, yeah, we're good. Nice. That's good TV right there for you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Dude, he hooked me up. I'm seeing some crazy ones. All right. Melane Tem Prodigal. This looks sick. Is this like another old school horror? I feel like he's hooking me up right now. I owe him big time. June 1991. Wow. Prodigal. Her brother Ethan is dead. Then why does he visit and why does he leave the doors open for Lucy and her sisters? Doors that whisper of the place that claimed Ethan's body and mind. Don't be afraid, Lucy. Welcome, Lucy. Welcome. Dude, that sounds awesome. Look at that cover art. I hope that does it justice. That is cool, man. That is super cool. That is creepy. I got a lot of new books, man. I'm excited. Edward Lee, I don't have any Edward Lee either. God, you're hooking me up, dude. You didn't have to do this, Nick. God, man, this is so cool. The Black Train by Edward Lee. His books are actually hard to find because I was like, because Nick talks about him and he's done a few uh, reviews and I like was like, hey, I should try Edward Lee out. And I tried to look him up and they're like expensive, even secondhand. So thank you so much, Nick. Apparently the bookstores near you are way better. Um, you, you really became such a great friend and I can't believe you sent this to me, man. Like we, Nick and I almost talk every day. So uh, he's a good buddy of mine and, and uh, we will release a story someday together if I can ever finish some stuff. So, so this one is Welcome to the Guest House, a historical bed and breakfast or a monument to evil and obscenity. Justin Collier didn't know the house, house lurid, shocking history, lucid, oh my gosh, I can't talk, shocking history when he arrived for a, relaxation, a relaxing stay. He knew nothing about the train tracks that run behind the house or that they once led the place were led to a place worse than hell, but he's learning. Dot, dot, dot. I'm going to stop there because I don't want anything spoiled for me, but I actually wrote a short story about train tracks and like trains because there's like a lot of people believe like supernatural things can be tied to trains. So that's actually pretty cool. Edward Lee. When is this from? Did I look that up already? Probably not because I suck. Dude, this is super fun, man. This is so much fun. 2009. So yeah, buddy. Cool, dude. Oh, we got another. We got another couple uh, westerns. Let's do those. Let's do those. This is sick. All right, L. Sharonon. I can't pronounce that last name, but sick. We got it. Like we got some Native Americans on the back. First time in paperback. It says on the back. And uh, Lieutenant Thomas Mullen may be retired from the new U.S. Cavalry, but he's still considered the best tracker around. So when a senator's son turns up missing, Mullen is the man called upon, upon, called upon to find him. It doesn't take long for Mullen to figure out that quite a few travelers and cowboys have disappeared recently in the same area, and the desolate, inhospitable land is offering no clues, only shallow graves. That's sick. I'm going to stop right there because, yeah, don't want anything spoiled for me either. Dude, this is super cool. Noose by Eric Red. That's cool. That is such a classic, like, 
got a shot. I got a, I got a repeater, and I'm going to stand in front of the noose. Meet Joe Noose, a guy, a good bounty hunter with a bad attitude. It's funny that his name is Joe Noose because um, in my uh, Western horror novel that I was working on, uh, it's actually probably like a novelette or whatever, but um, the main character, one of the brothers, uh, his nickname is Noose because he uh, he he slipped out of a noose one time um, when his brother basically saved him. But according to the townsfolk, because they never heard a gunshot, they uh, his basically they started calling him Noose and uh, Roy Noose Whitaker because he slipped out of the noose and nobody saw how he got out. So it became like a almost a legend, even though really his brother just threw a knife and cut the rope. So oh, I was giving spoilers away for my story, but that was just, that's a minor, that's minor, that's a in the beginning. Oh, I've heard of this one. I've heard of this one. We got Bad Brains by Kathy Koja. I have not read Kathy Koja, but uh, yeah, he walks the thin bloody silver line between sanity and dot, dot, dot. Wow. This is awesome. Kathy Koja, I've heard she is outstanding. Like the ocean of desire. Austin was still staggering from the divorce from Emily. First, he couldn't paint paint anymore. Then he did a pratfall in the parking lot of a 7-Eleven. The beer bottles broke brain damage. In the hospital, they said, don't stop taking your medication. Then the visions began, warm and wet like mother's blood. Wow, this is intense. An oily silver sheen, chrome cascades of blood and tears. From the corner of his eye, he sees the head of the mucus serpent reaching out for him. And in his pain and horror, he can think to say, Is Emily, Emily, oh my God. His obsessed mind has mutinied. His madness has launched him on a cross-country odyssey of depra depra I don't know, depravery and more pain, searching for Emily and love lost, searching for a cure, finding Dr. Quiet, healer or demon. Dr. Quiet will cure Austin. Painting will cure Austin. The way that she wrote this is like, death will cure Austin. Like the, the, the sentences are like very, that must be on purpose, but yeah, awesome. I mean, Clive Barker, Oh, somebody gave her a, a compliment, like saying that she's she's dark and twisted, um, similar to to Clyde Barker. So that one I'm excited to get to. What's that one from too? This will be a long, long video. A long video. Oh, 1992. See, all the good horror was around my birthday, man. Oh my gosh! You're hooking me up. All right, we got the keep. A, a Novel of Deep Horror by F. Paul Wilson. So, yeah, we got The Keep. This is this looks like some more throwback horror. I literally have none. So, Nick, you have officially started my collection of, like, 80s and 90s horror. This is from 81. So, F. Paul Wilson. The message is received from a Nazi commander stationed in the remote castle high in the Transylvanian Alps. Something is murdering my men i'm gonna leave it right there so basically it's it's gonna be around that time and i'm assuming vampires um i don't want to spoil anything so yeah so that looks sick the, the keep by f paul wilson so my man you are the man johnny d bogues mojave so i actually lived in the mojave desert if you made it this far in this video and uh yeah that's actually pretty cool. They got the cacti, and uh, that's actually the Mojave Desert is where there's mostly like saguaro cactus, and they are pro protected by um, like laws. You can't damage them. If you run your car into them, you're in big trouble. Like it's like very serious, and it's beautiful though. It's hotter than the portals of hell, but it's really nice. So till death do us part. Stranded in the Mojave Desert, Micaiah Bishop is about to crash in his cash in his chips for a good when his rescued when he's rescued by an unlikely savior whip watson his hand delivered two dozen brides to the silver boom town of calico where miners are going loco for a 
companionship. Better still, Watson asked Micaiah if he'd help escort the wagons, and far be it for Micaiah to pass up both cash and some very pretty faces. So this actually sounds like maybe a fun uh, Western novel to read. I'm actually, this one might go, I might read this one first, Nick. This just is right on my alley because I'd love to see, yeah, I'd love to see how this author writes the setting of somewhere that I lived. So this one actually is really intriguing. I'm excited. So yeah, that one sounds really cool. So yeah. I'm excited on that one. I'm excited about all this. This is pretty freaking sweet, man. Oh, no, he didn't. Now, this is my favorite. If you have been watching my channel, you know that. But this is my favorite of the Dark Tower series so far, and that is The Wastelands, book three in the Dark Tower. So um, I won't read the back, but I'm assuming this is one of the illustrated versions. So now that means I have the second, the third, and the fourth of this type of paperback for the Dark Tower with the pictures in between, which shouldn't, I will make sure that's not a spoiler, but yeah, so they're, no, nope. uh, I mean, that was an awesome scene, but that's too much of a spoiler. Okay, sweet. So you got, uh, it looks like Eddie Dean and Susanna and they're they're fighting some things and they have Roland's revolver one of them because Roland has two revolvers the main character in the the novels and uh wow Nick this is sick man this is just going right to my Stephen King collection I'm a big King fan so this is just this is so cool Nick so thank you so much oh look at look at the artwork how cool man Dude, thank you so much. I don't even know what to say. This is sick. I'm so excited to get into these. You hook me up, man. That's so cool. Like, we got, we got how many books, man? Like, geez, look how cool this is, man. I gotta go book shopping with you when all this is done, man. We'll go, go freaking, uh, go get some books together because I'll go to Michigan. Don't, don't threaten me with a good time. Once the COVID's over, dude, we'll, uh, we'll have to go go book shop and do like a book convention and you and I can do like a vlog together or something, dude. It'll be so much fun. So Nick, thank you so much. Let's see if I can pick this up. <laughs> thank you, dude. You're so cool, man. I am so excited and I need to go catch up to you in the book because I forgot it at home while I was on my trip. So thank you so much, dude. You're much appreciated. Peace.